Are you ready for some bedtime stories from Wood Library? Bernard and I are, so let's get started. Our first book is called Farmer Dale's Red Pickup Truck. It's written by Lisa Wheeler, illustrated by Ivan Bates, and it's published by Voyager Books. Farmer Dale's red pickup truck hauled a load of hay. A bossy cow with eyes of brown was standing by in the way. How about a ride, asked bossy cow. Hop in, said Farmer Dale. Move over, ordered bossy cow. There's no room for my tail. Well, the truck bounced up, the truck bounced down. It spit and sputtered toward the town. Farmer Dale's red pickup truck was chugging right along. A woolly sheep came strolling by, bleating out a song. Room for more, sang woolly sheep. Fit me in somehow? No problem, answered Farmer Dale. Move over, muttered Cal. The truck bounced up and shimmied. It coughed and wheezed back down. The pickup spit a cloud of smoke and sputtered toward the town. Farmer Dale's red pickup truck hit a rocky bump. It swerved beside a roly pig, skating past the dump. Oh, my stars, squealed roly pig. You folks just knocked me down. So sorry, Dale apologized. Need a round to our town? I do indeed, said roly pig. My skates are broken now. Well, climb aboard, sang woolly sheep. Move over, ordered cow. The truck bounced up and groaned back down. It hiccuped twice and chugged towards town. Farmer Dale's red pickup truck slowly rattled on. A goat with an accordion stood grazing on the lawn. Can I squeeze in? asked Nanny Goat. My pleasure, Farmer said. Bad idea, sang Woolly Sheep. The engine's almost dead. No room, lamented Roly Pig. We're overcrowded now. We'll make some room, said Farmer Dale. Move over, bossed the cow. Well, the truck bounced up, the springs all popped, the bumper bumped, the pickup stopped. Farmer Dale's red pickup truck stood stranded in the road. It seems you have a problem. A cocky rooster crowed. We do, admitted Farmer Dale. The problem is we're stuck. The weight of all these animals is too much for my truck. Rooster eyed the animals. Well, you're such a cozy group. I hate to cluck like Mother Hen, but who will fly the coop? Well, I just squeezed in, said Nanny Goat. I'm faint, squealed Roly Pig. I won't move, said Bossy Cow. I'm boss of this big rig. Too bad for you, sang Woolly Sheep. The biggest has to go. Settle down, said Farmer Dale. Let's think now, nice and slow. I'll get out, the farmer said, and push us from the rear. Good idea, said Nanny Goat. The cow replied, I'll steer. Farmer Dale's red pickup truck didn't budge at all. Dale pushed until his face was red, and then he heard a call. Can I butt in, said Nanny Goat. I'd like to lend a hoof. Rooster squawked, I'll point the way, and then roosted on the roof. I'll pitch in, sang Woolly Sheep. I'll ram it with my head. Don't hog the fun, said Roly Pig. Let's all help out instead. Well, the pickup rocked and rumbled. It rolled an inch or so. It's moving, shouted Bossy Cow. Well, the rooster crowed, too slow. Turn the key, said Farmer Dale. I can't, the cow replied. She's got no hands, explained the sheep. And Farmer Dale just sighed. <sighs> you should steer, said Bossy Cow. We'll move this heap along. The beasts all pushed together and sang a working song. 
The pickup bounced and shimmied. It groaned and squeaked and wheezed. It spit a thankful cloud of smoke and started with a sneeze. Farmer Dale's red pickup truck rumbled into town, hauling goat and pig and sheep and cow with eyes of brown. Rooster roosting on the hood cried out, cock-a-doodle cluck. Hip, hip, hooray for Farmer Dale and his red pickup truck. And you see where all those animals were going? The sign here says talent contest, town park today. So I think they were all coming to do some singing or playing or strutting. Who knows? Good thing they found Farmer Dale though. Well, there were five in the bed and the little one said, roll over, roll over. So they all rolled over and one fell out. There were four in the bed and the little one said, roll over, roll over. So they all rolled over and one fell out. There were three in the bed and the little one said, roll over, roll over. So they all rolled over and one fell out. There were two in the bed and the little one said, roll over, roll over. So they all rolled over and one fell out. There was one in the bed and the little one said, I'm lonely, I'm lonely. So one got back in the bed and another got back in the bed and another got back in the bed and another got back in the bed. Well, there were five in the bed and the little one said, good night. Thought it was time for a different one. Well, we're gonna go on a hunt now. This is called Find Cow Now. It's written and illustrated by sisters, Janet Stevens and Susan Stevens Crummel, and it's published by Holiday House. Now, what do you see here? I see a parrot or a parakeet and a dog. I don't see any cows. Nap, nap, nap. Dog was tired of naps. He needed to move, yip, yip. He needed to chase, ruff, ruff. He needed to round up. Yeehaw! Stop it! screeched Bird. You're driving me crazy, silly cattle dog. You're supposed to herd cows, not chairs, not rugs. You need a cow. What's a cow? asked Dog. Well, I don't know, said Bird, but a cow is not in the city. A cow must be out there in the country. Go. Find a cow. Now. Okay, bird, I'll go to the country to find me a cow. So dog rode down the elevator. Nobody noticed. Dog walked through the streets. Nobody noticed. Dog walked and walked until the city turned to the country. And there it was. A cow! Walk, walk, peck, peck. I am not a cow, silly dog. I am, can you tell? A chicken. Leave me alone. Well, dog walked and walked. And there it was. A cow. Right. Roof, roof, yip, yip, yee-haw. I am not a cow, silly dog. I'm a pig. Leave me alone. <coughs> snort, snort. Well, the dog walked and walked. And there it was. A cow. Roof, roof, yip, yip, yee-haw. I am not a cow, silly dog. I'm a donkey. Leave me alone. Hee-haw, hee-haw. Kaboom. 
Are you okay? No. Do you need some help? I want to go home. So they walked and walked until the country turned into the city. And they walked through the streets of the city. Nobody noticed. But then, what's going on? Good grief. Is that a... Eek! Eek! Beep! Beep! Help! Call the police! Honk! Honk! Get out of the way! Moo! Wait! Slow down! Moo! Go right, said Dog. Go left. Ruff, ruff, yip, yip, yee-haw. Are you okay? Yeah. My name is Dog. What's yours? Yes. Cow. Wow, I, I found a cow. Can you stay? Oh, it's late. Time to go home. But I'll be back. Thanks, dog. Thanks, cow. Bird, I I'm home. Did you find a cow? Yep. Did you hurt it? Oh, yeah. You did? Was it fun? What did it look like? Was it big? Did you? Stop it, silly bird. I'm tired. I need a nap. <laughs> Now, if you were taking a nap, would you take it on your bed or on the couch? Can you make your bed? And can you get one, two, three, four, five monkeys who don't want to go to bed? There were five little monkeys who were jumping on the bed. One fell off and he bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So four little monkeys are jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor. The doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So then there were three little monkeys who were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor. The doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So two little monkeys were jumping on the bed. One fell off and he bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor. The doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. And that leaves one little monkey who is jumping on the bed. When she fell off, oh, she bumped her head. So her mama called the doctor. The doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So there are no more monkeys. I don't think there are any monkeys in the next book. But there is a friend and another friend, a bear and a squirrel. And this is called, I'm sticking with you. It's written by Smriti Prasadam Halls, illustrated by Steve Small, and published by Godwin Books. Wherever you're going, I'm going too. Whatever you're doing, I'm sticking with you. Whether you're grumpy, or silly, or mad, through good times and bad times, happy or sad. Whatever you're thinking, I am all ears. I'm ready to listen to all your ideas. Ready to be there to help you along, even if sometimes, well, it goes a bit wrong. Whatever you're doing, that is the plan. You may think I can't, but I bet you I can. Because I will try things I never would do. Never, that is, until you showed me to. 
Like peas in a pod, you and I fit. Like strawberries and cream, we are a hit. Whatever the game, I'm on your side. No mountain too small or river too wide. We sit at the cliff top. We sit by the lake. We sit by the ice cap. I eat all the cake. Mm, actually, Bear, we, well, I think I need to be on my own, if you don't mind. It's getting a bit crowded in here. There's barely any room. Really? Are you sure? Okay. Okay, then. There goes Bear. Squirrel stayed behind. Ah, that feels better. Each thing in its place, all neat and tidy. There's, oh, so much more space. I can do what I fancy whenever I wish. There's nothing a squash and nothing a squish. It's such a nice change to do things alone. Whatever I want to, all on my own. I've got all I need. I don't have to share. Everything's perfect. Except, I miss Bear. Actually, hey, Bear, 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 come back, 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 back. Who am I kidding? Where would I even be without you? Who else would listen? What would I do? Who helps me the best to be the best I can be? Who shares their very last chocolate with me? Me without you? Mm, it just doesn't work. Me without you? Well, I'd just go berserk. So, like it or lump it, you're stuck with me. For better or worse, that's the way it should be. Whether we lose or whether we win, we'll be there together through thick and through thin. We'll pick up the pieces. We'll patch up the hole. We'll mend what needs fixing, because that's how we roll. When we're unstuck, we won't fall apart. How could we ever? Oh, we're joined at the heart. We'll fit back together like bugs in a rug, like jam in a donut, like arms in a hug. So wherever you're going, I'm going too. Whatever you're doing, I'm sticking like glue. And whether you like it or love it or not, we are a team. And I love you a lot. And if you like the story, we just got the sequel to it that I might share another time. Or you can come in the library and get it. Well, can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stand up? Because it's time to jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump. Jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? <sighs> yawn your sleepies out, yawn. 
Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. Well, Squirrel was going to stick with Bear. And now we're going to have a story about some hens that are letting go. This is one of the Loopy Coop hen books called Letting Go. It's written and illustrated by Janet Morgan Stokey. And this book? Well, it's published by Dial Books for Young Readers. And I think it's in small chapters. This is called The Tree. Well, it is hot at Loopy Coop Farm. Midge and Pip and Dot sit in the shade. <gasps> oh, said Midge. Oh, said Pip. Ow, said Dot. Who is up there, shouts Dot. Maybe it's a bird. Maybe it's a cat, said Pip. Maybe it's a fox, said Midge. Let's get out of here. Chapter 2. Rooster Sam, Rooster Sam, they cry. A fox, he's in the tree and he is throwing apples. Come with us, say the hens, please. Rooster Sam struts to the tree. Go ahead, fox, shouts Pip. Throw an apple down now. Well, they waited. Rooster Sam starts to go and then he jumps. He runs. Chapter three, the ladder. We need to go up there, says Dot. Mm, I don't like ladders, said Pip. I don't like ladders or foxes, said Midge. I will do it, said Dot. She clicked on her hard hat. Dot goes way up high. She goes to the top. Oh no, says Pip. Come down, Dot. The fox is mad, says Midge. Save yourself, Dot. Do you see why they think the fox is mad? Look, here's one, two, three, four apples came falling down. No, says Dot. Come up with me. There is no fox. It is so pretty up here. But Dot, it is not safe, says Pip. Look at all these apples. The fox threw them down. Come down. Chapter four, apple feathers. It is not a fox, says Dot. The apples just let go. Dot shakes her wings. See, my feathers let go. One, two, three, four. Dot says, Apples let go too. Come on up, you'll see. So they climb the ladder. Oops, said Midge. Oh, says Pip. You are right, Dot. They just let go. They get to the top. <gasps> oh, says Pip. Ah, says Midge. I told you it was pretty, says Dot. They look all around. It is very pretty. I feel like I am an apple, says Pip. Way up high, says Dot. I feel like letting go. Let's do it. Me too, says Midge. Her eyes are wide. And then, oh, oh. That was fun. I love being an apple. Let's do it again. <laughs> silly hens. Silly, silly hens. Well, can you stretch your arm? I don't know if I can do it here because my arm will go right outside of the frame, but I'll hold it up here. But hold it up high over your head. And that's going to be an apple. And your arm is going to be a tree. A little red apple hung high in an apple tree. I looked up at it and it looked down at me. Come down, come down, I called. 
And what do you suppose? Why, that little red apple hit me right on the nose. Well, I think we've got time for one more story before our flannel board. And this is called, I Dare You Not to Yawn. Are you getting tired yet? Are you thinking about yawning? This is written by Aline Boudreau and illustrated by Serge Bloch. And it's published by Candle Wave Press. You sure you don't feel like yawning? Sometimes just mentioning it makes people want to yawn. Do you see what's happening over here? What is that cat doing? Yawning. Yawns are sneaky. They can creep up on you when you least expect them. And there you are, just minding your own business, building the tallest block tower in the history of the universe, or dressing up the cat, when suddenly your arms stretch up, your eyes squish tight, your mouth opens wide, your tongue curls back and... A yawn pops out. And the next thing you know, you're being sent upstairs to put your pajamas on. Pajamas lead to bedtime stories. And bedtime stories lead to sleepy time songs. And sleepy time songs lead to good night hugs and kisses. And before you know it, you're tucked into bed, snug as a bug, and wondering, how did I get here? So if you're not ready to go to bed, follow these tips and do not yawn. If someone else yawns like your baby brother or your big sister or the dog, they can again. Look away. Yawns are like cold. They spread. And stay away from huggable stuffed animals and soft, cozy pajamas, and your favorite blankie because mm, they can make you feel snuggly. And avoid bedtime stories about sleepy baby animals like tiger cubs arching their backs in one last stretch, their eyes squished tight, their tongues curled back. Or you might feel stretchy too. And don't sing sleepy time songs with about twinkling stars or buying sheep, especially the counting kind. One sheep, two sheep, ba, ba, ba. And whatever you do, don't think of droopy-eyed baby orangutans holding their long arms out for a hug from their mamas. Their little mouths forming perfect O's. O, O, O. Uh-oh. If you try all of these things, but a yawn still creeps up and grabs a hold of you, quick, Cover your mouth to keep it from escaping. Because if your arms stretch up and your eyes squish tight and your mouth opens wide and your tongue curls back and a yawn pops out. and off to bed you'll go. See, I told you, yawns are sneaky. Good night. Well, before we go to the flannel board, I think you better find your bubble gum. So reach in your pocket, and if you don't have a real one, just pretend. Pull out some pretend bubble gum, unwrap it, and pop it in your mouth and chew it up.
Should we do something disgusting? Spit your gum in your hand and clap your other hand on top. And we've got sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. Do you want to leave it there? Probably not. So what do we have to say? On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your arm. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Time to throw it in the trash. And let's get our flannel board story. Let's see if I can get it to work. I really like animals. I like them a lot. And 15 animals is what I've got. I've got 15 animals, they're friendly and tame, and I've given each one a special name. I have a cat named Bob and a dog named Bob and two fish called Bob and Bob. I've got Bob, my hamster. Let's put him in front because he's little. And then Bob, my horse. And a piglet named, well, Bob, of course. There's my rabbit, Bob, and his bunny wife, Bob, and their kids, Bob, Bob, and Bob. There's Bob, the mouse, and Bob, the bird, and my turtle. Simon James Alexander Ragsdale the third. So those are our books. One left. We always finish with one from Sandra Boynton, and this is the first one we always used. It's called the Going to Bed book, and it's published by Little Simon. Well, the sun has set not long ago. Now everybody goes below to take a bath in one big tub with soap all over, scrub, scrub, scrub. They hang their towels out on the wall and find pajamas, big and small. And with some on top and some beneath, they brush and brush and brush their teeth. And when the moon is on the rise, they all go up to exercise. And down once more, but not so fast. They're on their way to bed at last. The day is done. They say good night, and somebody turns off the light. 
The moon is high, the sea is deep, and they rock and rock and rock to sleep. And I bet you'll be doing that soon too. So Bernard and I just want to say thank you for joining us here at Wood Library for our bedtime stories. And we'll be back next week with some more. We'll see you then.